You wake up, sip your coffee, and see a bunch of fear-mongering telling you that you're going to be laid off because of the recession. Yikes. You scroll, and then you see that ChatGPT is predicting natural disasters, close to curing cancer, getting a Nobel Prize, and let's be real, it can code better than you. At least write comments and well-documented code better than you. Well, will it replace you? Are all the tech companies just going to lay us all off and replace us with AI, which is cheaper, replies 100 times faster, never gets pregnant or sick, or complains about the office commute or forgets to attach documents to their emails? Could this even mean the end of software engineering? Well, yes and no. Let me explain. If you're new here, I'm Delia, a software engineer, and we talk about tech and travel, so make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and turn on notifications if you're interested in more content like this and you want to live your best life as an engineer. Here's the thing. The timing is weird. It does make you wonder if tech companies are using the layoffs as an opportunity to collude to lower software engineer salaries, or tech salaries in general, or worse, just replace them all with AI. Well, colluding wouldn't be the first time. A few years back, some fancy pants lawyers for Google, Apple, Intel, and Adobe have agreed to settle a bunch of technical workers who accused the companies of colluding to keep salaries artificially low. And the workers were seeking a whooping $3 billion in damages, but they settled for a measly $324 million, which is only about five grand per employee. And of course, it wouldn't be the first technology boom either, where people were afraid to be replaced by machines or machines to cause a big tech boom and then a crash. The dot-com boom in the 2000s, railroads in the 1840s, automobiles in the early 20th century, radio in the 1920s, television in the 1940s, transistor electronics in the 1950s, computer time sharing in the 1960s, and home computers and biotechnology in the 1980s. And guess what's next? AI. For example, for the dot-com boom, low interest rates in 1998-89 facilitated an increase in startup companies and venture capitalists threw money at anything that resembled tech, which is what caused the boom and then the crash. Sound familiar? But let's get back to the issue at hand, which is, should we actually be worried? If you really want to make sure you don't get replaced by AI, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the like button, and to extra robot proof yourself, consider the notification bell as well because we'll be covering this topic a lot more here on this channel. Well, one, there's a huge discrepancy between the tech news and what's actually going on in the economy as a whole. And two, what we see in the news isn't entirely accurate. Big surprise. So first off, tech does not equal software engineering. The scary fear-mongering articles floating around make a living off of, well, fear-mongering. So it's advantageous to them to exaggerate things and make you really scared of the tech layoffs and really scared of ChatGPT replacing your jobs and overhype everything and make it seem a hundred times more powerful than it actually is. When you hear the term tech, you might picture a software engineer typing away at their computer, but it can refer to anyone working at a tech company. Engineers, operations, marketing, recruiters, they're all labeled as tech employees and many other critical roles that make up the tech industry exist, not just software engineers. So this can be misleading when the news talks about tech layoffs, it doesn't necessarily mean engineers are losing their jobs left and right. A lot of these articles are blurring the lines and using the term tech interchangeably with software engineering, which is not cool. It's just not precise. And as software engineers or just generally pragmatic people, we like to be precise. Yes, tech layoffs have actually happened, but engineers are actually one of the least affected departments. In fact, engineers have less to fear than their non-engineer counterparts. If you check layoffs.fyi, 19% of employees were laid off in companies where layoffs did happen, but only 5% of those layoffs were engineers. So while engineers are losing some job security, it's not as dire as the press makes it out to be. Most of the layoffs were actually HR and recruiters. Yes, there's a catch. The layoff listed on layoffs.fyi can be skewed a little bit because they're opt-in, but it still gives us a really good picture of what's going on. Of course, people that lost their jobs are still hurting, and don't get me wrong, some engineers have been affected by the layoffs, but it's really not as bad as the press makes it out to be. Another thing to mention is that some of the people out there were overemployed and working multiple jobs, so they're still employed, just a little bit less. And statistically, many of them are able to find a new job within four months. Secondly, Tech layoffs represent little of the whole economy. There's a huge disconnect here because you hear about all of the layoffs, but there's actually 1.7 job openings for every person looking for a job in the US. US unemployment is at 3.4% which is the lowest it's been since 1969. The long-term average is 5.73%. So 3.4% 
in January of 2023 is amazing and also below market expectations. And that's because the number of people out there looking for jobs is historically low. Millions left the workforce in 2020, retired early, things like that. And there's actually more demand for workers than ever before and not enough supply. And there's that disconnect there because the tech industry is only 3% of the 157 million workers in America. So we're focused in on a very small piece of the economy with 1.7 jobs for every person looking for a job. How do we solve that? Well, either those jobs don't get filled, which means we have a gap in the market or they get filled by AI. Someone uses AI to build systems that can automate some of those jobs. And I wonder who can do that. Oh, maybe a software engineer? And while hiring has slowed down in the past few months, there are still many companies that are hiring engineers, so it's not all doom and gloom. And a big reason why this happened specifically to tech companies is what I talked about in a previous video here, which if you command click on Mac or control click on Windows, you can open in a new tab to watch later because let me finish telling you all of these important things in this video first, but go watch it after. To summarize, a big reason this all happened in tech is interest rates were dirt cheap in 2021. We had a huge record influx of money, stimulus checks, unemployment checks, Corporations all got loans, venture capitalists threw money at anything that looked like tech. So lots of corporations use their millions of dollars of profit to pay shareholders because saving it means they would have to pay taxes on that money, right? So you either reinvest it or pay shareholders. So we had more buybacks of stock in 2021 than ever before, but this also meant stocks go up. Tech companies' balance sheets looked better than ever before, so they were able to get even bigger loans. And many of these corporations got into corporate debt. Now with interest rates rising and the term on these corporate loans usually aren't very long, they wanna pay back their debt ASAP. And you can do that either by making more money or lowering expenses. And it's hard for them to make more money since most of them reached a plateau in growth and reached market saturation. So what better way to save money than layoffs? But it's safe to say that software engineers will still be needed because third thing, AI can't replace developers, at least not yet. And I have a few reasons to back that up. Firstly, AI is limited by the quality of its training data and it can't create a functional app without a lot of help from human developers. It can't sit in meetings for hours or understand client requirements because clients don't even know what they want. Being a software developer also requires so much creative problem solving where humans excel, but AI is just limited to fancy pattern recognition. But when it comes to creative problem solving, developers are still king and they're still gonna be needed. And finally, let's not forget that software development is a highly collaborative field. Developers work together in teams, bouncing ideas off each other and refining each other's work. While AI can certainly help with certain aspects of the development, it can't replace the human connections and teamwork that make software development so rewarding and actually functional. Don't worry, we're not quite at the point yet where robots can code better than humans, yet. But many software engineers are worried about being replaced by a robot. And it's true that advancements in technology will lead to job losses in many industries. But in reality, you won't be replaced by AI. You'll be replaced by a human using AI. There's a few things that will change and you should keep in mind in this new world where AI gains popularity and the ball also goes slightly back in the employer's court. First, the candidate experience will likely degrade, so expect more interviews, competition will be tougher and the hiring bar will go up, which means you need to be better prepared for interviews. Secondly, we'll probably see the return of homework assignments and coding quizzes early on in the interview process, even for senior engineers, which is annoying, but hey, you have ChatGPT. Also, companies are gonna be able to get a little more selective with their hiring, so the bar for getting hired will likely rise due to the increased competition for fewer positions. So you can't ask for the same ridiculous comp packages that we used to get back in the good old days of March, 2021, but you're still gonna be paid handsomely as a software engineer or as many tech roles. This also means that the role of junior software engineers will especially change because a lot of their work will get automated and replaced with bigger picture work or more human-centric work. So it'll also get harder for new grads to compete with all the laid off experienced candidates, but definitely not impossible as long as you have good things to bring to the table and you're prepared. In my opinion, the software engineering we do today will be drastically different than what software engineers will do five years from now. But nonetheless, 
will need humans to manage and maintain software for at least a little while longer, at least until we develop ethical and legal groundwork around more powerful AI, which is going to take a while. The future of AI is bright as long as we program it the right way. And as developers, it's our job to do that. By embracing AI and learning how to use it well as a software engineer, you'll be building the future and the future is all about AI. And in the future world of jobs, whoever learns the fastest is the winner. And AI is just the opportunity you've been waiting for to help you get there faster. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, consider subscribing, leaving a like, maybe turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video because we're going to talk about this a lot more and I will see you in the next one. Bye.